Marathon Day is a tradition for uh, some friends of mine and I to go to every year. I heard the first explosion and turned towards it and I immediately knew something was wrong. But before I had a chance to react, the second explosion happened and the next thing I knew, I was um, catapulted through the front door onto the floor, feeling as though my foot were on fire. There were herds of people running past me and to my surprise, people actually stopped to help me rather than running away and just being concerned about themselves. I was afraid to look at my foot because I didn't want to go into a panic, but I could see just by the reaction on people's faces when they saw it. I knew it was pretty severely injured. Once I got to the ER, I don't remember much until I, I woke up from my surgery. My left leg was severely injured. There were multiple bones broken. My ankle was bro broken and a lot of small bones. And after three surgeries, I was told that I had a choice as to whether to keep it or have it amputated. For me, just kind of dwell on the negative is sort of a waste of time to me. They gave me a pretty good picture of what sort of functionality I would have if I kept it, which wasn't much. I realized that it was something that happened, that I couldn't change it, and I needed to just make the best decision that I possibly could. For me, the best decision was to have the limb amputated. Then I decided I would do everything I could to get my life back to as close as it could be before it happened. The rehab process, you know, has been pretty intense. I've been able to see, you know, what you can do with a prosthetic leg. Doing things like paddle boarding or wearing high heels were important to me because I'm disappointed when something comes up and I have to say, I can't do that because of my leg. And I want that list of things to be as, as short as possible. I wore high heels um, all the time. And, and I, it's something that I liked to do, um, and a lot of women like to do it. This is my, um, the leg that I wear with high heels, and it's got, you know, it's shaped to fit into a heel. And it was um, color matched to my skin. I can paint the toenails if I want and take the polish off. When I'm wearing it, you know, I, I don't think people even realize that it's not real. I was just in the elevator. I had no socks on, and a gentleman walked in, and I could see him staring at my feet. And I wondered if he was, you know, questioning whether or not it was real. And instead he looked up at me and said, you must be cold. <laughs> um, you know, so he didn't know. I was fitted for a waterproof leg. My main objective in getting that was to be able to stand taking a shower. But I decided that I was going to try to get on the paddleboard. And it, it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. My thoughts on how the city has rallied around us survivors, I can't even describe it. What comes to mind mostly is the Red Sox games I was invited to and the Patriots game. It felt so great to kind of be part of Boston's sports success and, and that whole be strong mantra. It makes me feel like people haven't forgotten. I'll certainly never forget what happened, and I don't think the city will either, but I think it also, each year that it continues, is a reminder of how strong the city is and the fact that we survived it.